Uh, let's move on to Indy Boston. Just some overall uh, thoughts from you on I, Boston's playoffs so far. They've done their job, taking care of business. Everything they need to do in those series, they accomplished. And I think, you know, there's probably going to be some adversity talk, but they did lose game two of each of those series and immediately had to go snatch it back. Um, it's going to be a different adjustment, but Jason Tatum has been able to make plays, make reads and drive. Uh, Jalen Brown has been really, really good in this playoffs. I, I hope people realize the numbers that he's put up. And you mix in Drew Holiday and Derek White and their impact on both ends. So I just think it's been a taking care of business run so far. This is going to be a different series for both these teams, though. Uh, how so with Indiana? I, I think with Indiana, my mind comes to, one, Boston has stronger defensive personnel to a degree in which we feel, or in theory, they could feel comfortable with a lot more switching. And I think Boston offensively on the other end, they can attack Indiana in different ways to where Indiana's defense not known for it, but they've been active. And as the series has gone on, they've found different ways to impact things. They've made adjustments. Once they key in on things, they've been pretty good. When Boston has the full weight of their lineup, we can just kind of toggle different things. And your your help points are now, okay, we're leaving Derek White or we're leaving Drew Holiday or it's Al Horford or Kristaps when he comes back. Boston can keep Indiana in rotation and Boston can also kind of mix and match and attack different items if they have that right mindset offensively, which is always the question for me with Boston. But if you think about, okay, we don't want to switch Tyrese Halliburton onto this matchup. That works, but that's Drew Holiday potentially short roll. That's Derek White potentially on the short roll. They can make those plays. They kick out. Look who's catching the ball. That's where Indiana is now going to have to sustain defense in a different way. Um, so I, I just think in my mind, can Indiana – Find the gaps offensively, because they're going to play. They're a collective. Uh, they play with great pace. But then defensively, if Boston does what they need to do, are they going to be able to sustain their defense over the course of a series? Yeah, I think I want to talk about Indy's offense versus Boston's defense. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's less important to can Indy stop Boston? That's the question mark. You go... Uh, sort of even really down the line um, with Boston. And I, I feel like there's a lot of favorable matchups that they have. Um, and their ability to get teams in rotation, and I think specifically about this series, uh, Missoula, I and mean, I brought this is why I brought it up earlier with with the the hedges with Halliburton. So whether it is a straight pick and roll whether it is um, their sort of V2, Horns 2 action, where they go to that triangle, rip screen, slip to get behind. Um, they're, they're going to get behind the defense. Like if, if, if Halliburton, whether he's switching or not, they manipulate these screening angles so well. And you've got Al Horford spaced. You've got Jalen Brown spaced on the weak side. Whoever, Drew Holiday. So... The communication's got to be excellent. How they guarded uh, New York in terms of physicality, being up to touch uh, the off-ball defense on DiVincenzo, particularly games four through six, that stuff is going to be massive. But this is a very different team to guard. It just is. And the, the sort of marker for me, I, I think about what makes these two offenses great. For me, with with Indy, it's it's them, their ability to spread you out, have multiple actions, create multiple closeouts, and eventually they're going to score in the paint. Number one team in the league in points in the paint. And a lot of that is because they are playing so fast, even off of makes, that it's hard to set your defense. They just flow right into actions using throw-ahead passes, get-ahead passes, whatever. So that's them. With Boston, I think the marker for me this series is going to be the rotations and the three-point volume. Like, can Indiana win the math game mm. against Boston? That, in some ways, is, is I, I think, 
as important as any matchup or whatever, or, or any strategic thing. It's like, can we limit the three point shots? Can we limit the defensive errors that cause a breakdown and into rotation? Uh, and so sometimes I think, look, I think, think sometimes when you play Boston, you got to be like, hey, hey, we're kind of willing to live with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, you know, taking ISO tough twos, taking ISO tough step back threes. Like we, you, in some ways you have to be willing to live with that against a favorable matchup. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise you're just in rotation. They're going to, they're just going to rain threes or they're going to score at the rim. And and I think that's where it gets interesting. How much switching does Indiana want to do? What do they want to live with? Do they employ pressure just to kind of get Boston to start their sets later? Because in my mind, if there's a concern, if you're Boston, which way do you go? With the way the Pacers play, do you get trapped into that to a degree where now you're taking some quicker shots? You mentioned the three-point volume. Which type of threes are you generating? Are these pull-ups? Are these quick ones off pick and roll? Or are these the ones where Indian is in rotation and they've had to defend and they're trying to recover? Do you slow down too much? And now it's, okay, we, we, we feel comfortable with Tatum attacking this matchup or Brown attacking this matchup. There's 16 on the clock. We've just started our action. They only had to defend one pick and roll. And they stayed at home, to your point, to try and get you to take a tough two. And now we miss Indiana zooms the other way. Is that where the series could get shaky? But can Indiana put Boston in that zone over the course of seven games, you know? Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought up the ball pressure because I was actually I was thinking about it this morning. And and obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. That's the beautiful thing about sports. We can sit here and talk and we're like, <laughs> oh, that's what they were thinking. Okay, all right. You know what I mean? But I was thinking about the ball pressure component. And there's two teams that have pressured more in the backcourt, significantly more than uh, everybody else in the playoffs, and it's the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Indiana Pacers. Uh, there was a ton of possessions in this series against New York where the Pacers had not one, not two, but three defenders in the backcourt. And if you look across the board in these NBA playoffs in the tracking era, I mentioned this in Game 6 on the broadcast, there have been more possessions with backcourt defensive pr pressure on average across the league than in any other playoffs in the tracking era. And it's not an insignificant margin. It's 36 possessions, you know, on average this season versus uh, I think the second was like 28. So this is a key thing. So you bring up the pace. How fast does Boston want to play? And there are times, I fucking, they're an awesome team and they're great, but there are times when they get a little bit slower and a little bit less decisive and can get bogged down. That is, that's been the case, whether it's been <laughs> Brad Stevens, Ima Yudoka, uh, Joe Mazzula, like th that has happened. All right. So if Indy pressures, does that slow them down a little bit? Does that make them more deliberate? Um, if Indy's then try to play in a track meet, does Boston then try to play in a track meet? Um, so, you know, stuff like Jalen Brown in transition, right? He was one of the best players in transition in the NBA. Like how much can he get loose in transition? The last piece on this that I, I wanted to just talk about is it is remarkable uh, in a, and it, it should be intuitive, but we don't talk about it enough. It's remarkable in a league where everybody's always talking. Like, it's a make or miss league. It's a make or miss league. For sure it is. The statistics this postseason on the rebounding battle, where the teams that win the rebounding battle have won something like 55 games and they've lost 13 or 14 games. It's, it, it, it's, there's a massive disparity. And Indy, in that Knicks series, they lost every game, they lost the rebounding battle. But there was a toughness and a pursuit of the basketball that I thought was really important, and it's going to be important again. It's the little stuff, the Aaron Neesmith keeping a ball alive, getting a second possession. For Boston, it's Peyton Pritchard crashing out of the corner. Like, you look at these little swing things, and they happen all the time. End of quarters, start of quarters, a 
a star getting a rest. All of a sudden, TJ McConnell comes in. They go up five more points in three minutes, right? These type of little stretches in games and little plays in games are not insignificant. And so I think the rebounding battle will be important in this. It always is, but I think it'll be really important in this Boston Indy series. I agree. Uh, I, and you know the data backs it up. I, it'll be interesting. I mean, Boston can't. <laughs> Boston has to find a way to crash the glass. Indiana can't give those up. But for some reason, while you were saying that, I was trying to think about how Boston defends Indiana and how different of a series that's going to be for them. And can Indiana make those plays where they are able to get rebounds offensively? And now they get some of those easier threes. Like I'm just. It's not it's not a purely a pick and roll series. Like we know Indiana has pace and tempo and ball movement, player movement. Boston's gonna have to sustain sustain their defense. And they're gonna have to find a way to continue to make those efforts and make those rotations in a way they haven't had to in the playoffs so far. You know, in, in my mind, I was like, hey, if Miami can find their movement, they they couldn't. If Cleveland can find their movement, they just didn't have enough people. If Boston is now constantly in rotation and they're reacting on defense, what does this series look like? Or does Boston find a way to say, hey, we're going to switch. We'll bog you down that way. We feel comfortable with these people guarding Tyrese. We feel comfortable with these people guarding Pascal. We're going to take away Miles Turner, uh, take him off the table so he can't hurt us in multiple ways like he's done during this postseason. That is where it gets interesting because if Boston can sustain their defense to, and play it at a high level, I, I think Indiana's path to victory, it just, the margin's slim. I'm, I'm curious to see how Joe matches up. Um, cause he, I think he has some options, uh, in particular, the, who, who guards Siakam, um, does he use Drew as a little bit of a roamer as he's done at times this season? Does Drew take the Siakam matchup? Um, you know, how much is Drew on Halliburton? You know, I would expect Derek White to start on Halliburton, but how he uses Drew this series defensively is going to be interesting to me. It's one of the one of the fun things all season about Boston is, you know, you certain games you're like, oh, Drew's got the primary guy. And then you're like, oh, Drew's got the fifth guy. Let's see what creative stuff Joe does with Drew. So fascinating stuff. Uh, I'm so excited for both these series. I really am. 